Hey guys, so drumming is expensive, there's no doubt about it. Breaking sticks, to replacing skins, to cracking cymbals, there's always something nagging at your wallet. This however leaves an opportunity this holiday season. While the drummer in your life is busy searching through the couch trying to get every last bit of change so they can afford new drumsticks this month, you can swoop in with a gift idea that may be outside the norm of what that drummer is thinking about paying for on a week to week basis. The trouble in buying gifts for a drummer is that mostly everything to do with their drum set is so specific to them. This is why it's so hard to get them an appropriate gift that they're going to use and love without ruining the surprise of what it is by asking them. So that's where this video comes in. I'm going to take you through a variety of gift options for the drummer in your life so that this Christmas you're going to have the perfect gift for them and you won't have to ruin the surprise by asking what size stick to buy. So the list of products that I've assembled for you guys, I've tried to select items that are outside of the norm of what the regular everyday drummer is buying for themselves. A lot of this stuff is really common, although it's not all necessary all the time. So these are not things that you can mess up in purchasing and they're likely not something that the drummer that you're purchasing for already has which can be really exciting because it's now something that they can discover for the first time all right cool so the first product that I've put aside to show you guys is cymbal polish cymbal polish what are you talking about you need to polish your cymbals you can do yourself a favor by polishing cymbals especially old cymbals me myself I'm a heavy hitter I break cymbals way too much and I never get a cymbal to the point where it could be polished although I have in the past when I was younger what happens with cymbals is over time the stick itself, especially if the stick has a coating or paint on it, the tip of the stick as well as the sides are going to slowly rub off onto your cymbal. And because of this, it's going to fade the cymbal. You're going to have sort of paint chipping off onto the cymbal. You can get other things like sweat on the cymbal too, which doesn't help. Cleaning your drum set and cleaning your cymbals do affect the sound. And it's a good idea to have everything as clean and in as good as working order as possible to get the best possible sound. Cymbal polish really helps with this. As far as brands, I would only recommend that you get the brand that is the provider of the symbol. So if you own Zildjian symbols and you're all K custom and A custom, and then get the Zildjian symbol polish. If you own Sabian, if you own Pasty, those companies do make symbol polishes. Get those symbol polishes that are specific, more geared towards their own symbols. Symbol polish is gonna come in around $12. It's important to note too, before I go any further, that the screenshots from the Amazon links that I'm gonna be putting on the screen for you guys are gonna be displaying the Canadian pricing. So if those dollars are a little more expensive than the US dollar equivalent, I will be stating and posting on the screen, however, the US dollar version. So if you get confused because I'm saying numbers that are cheaper than what you see on your screen, that's just because I'm looking at that website here in Canada and there's the dollar exchange ticket count for. The next product I want to bring up and feature is Moon Gel. This is another great stocking stuffer. Moon Gels are used in the actual tuning of the drum. A lot of drummers will use these to cut resonance off the batter heads of their toms and snare. Depending on how many you use on your head and what placement you use them at, you can create different sounds by adjusting how dry the snare or the tom feels. These are super inexpensive. Depending on the configuration of your drum setup, I'd recommend getting one to three packs of these. They last an out outrageous amount of time. To clean them, you just put them under hot water, you rinse them off, you let them completely dry, and then they're back to being sticky and ready to go and be reapplied. However, I don't ever do that, I don't ever clean them. They're so cheap that I find that once they're coated in dirt and wood chippings off of my sticks that I just buy another pack. A pack of six of these guys is gonna go from between six, seven bucks sort of thing. So yeah, again, really great stocking stuffer. Next product, same thing, we're still in the stocking stuffer price range. This guy is gonna be under 10 bucks. This is a kick pack. Pads. This specific kick pad is by Aquarian, which make drum heads. I use this one on my kit at the moment. The reason why I really like this one is because it's super thin. It's essentially just a piece of paper, really, with a layer of plastic over top of it and you would be surprised at what a difference these guys make. Especially for someone like me with a really heavy foot and then I use very aggressive beaters on top of that. When I'm performing live, I perform with my Iron Cobra wood beaters, which can put holes very quickly through bass drum heads if you don't have some kind of protection. So kick pads will do the trick. You can get these at any brand. I believe Remo and Evans sell them as well, as well as Aquarian, and there's several other brands out there. You can find them on Amazon for around five to eight bucks. So again, we're gonna do another sort of stocking stuff for it. These guys are cymbal felts. 
Sumo felts are a fantastic idea that most drummers don't even know that they need. Sumo felts do actually wear out. If you have a beefy, thick, heavy cymbal on a cymbal stand, like a 21 inch craft ride or something along those lines, there's a lot of weight there putting pressure on the cymbal felt underneath the cymbal. And if you are being gentle on your cymbals, trying to conserve them for as long as possible, you probably have a bit of a tilt in the stand. Well, when you tilt such a heavy piece of metal and then leave it for a long period of time on top of a piece of felt, yes, that felt is actually gonna get compressed on one side. And this just makes it harder to adjust the cymbal's balance point. I recommend you check out sim pads. I've been using sim pads ever since I started playing TRX cymbals. They come in every box of TRX cymbals and they're fantastic. I love them. I use them on as the top and bottom felt and they're cool too because they're different colors and you can sort of mix and match them around the kit. You can get packs of these guys on Amazon for like 10 bucks for five. Really sweet stocking stuffer. All right, cool, so the next product is a super simple, super small product. Again, totally along the lines of a stocking stuffer. We're still in the lower price range bracket. I'm gonna start to get more expensive as we roll through these. These guys I love to death and I'm using them constantly. These are called lug locks. The idea in the lug lock here is that this side, the fatter side, is gonna be positioned between the lug and the actual wood hoop, and that's gonna create the amount of pressure needed so that that lug doesn't slip. This is perfect for the touring drummer. You can tune your snare once, lug lock it in place, and it's gonna keep that tuning for a much longer time than opposed to just tuning before every performance or every show. I don't use these on my toms, I use them only on my snare drum. Typically not the bottom head as much as the top head. I have wrenched my snare into place and then locked all the lugs top and bottom before. I love them, I do it every time I go out on the road so that it makes for a quicker load in before every show. I find that the snare drum alone doesn't need to be tuned based on the acoustic environment you're in. I mean, yes, technically it does if you're super uptight about the way your drums are gonna sound on stage, but if you're not too concerned and you just want a reliable, sturdy sound for every show that you don't have to tamper with before you go on stage, lug locks are the way to do it for sure. That being said, like I already mentioned, I don't do this for my toms. I do tune my toms individually before shows but if you find that you're out on the road and you're playing a lot of similar venues or if you're just playing every sort of Thursday night at the same bar then these will work great for your predicament because the odds of the acoustic environment changing a whole lot are very low so you can use these on toms as well as snare in that situation cost of lug locks though are a little bit expensive in my book if you search these guys up on Amazon you can get a pack of six locks for five bucks that's extraordinarily expensive for little pieces of plastic I get mine off of a buddy of mine at a local music shop. I recommend you just hit up a guitar center or a local store near you. Oftentimes when you go into the actual retailer, they'll even just hook you up for free depending on who you're dealing with. And if you're buying some other things, like you're going in and getting sort of like a order of cymbals or some new sticks or a new snare, whatever it is. And then depending on who you're dealing with, you mentioned that you want like some lug locks along with it. They might even throw it for free in some cases. The local store that I go to has so many of these laying around that they just give them to me when I show up. So, so yeah. I would not recommend getting those off Amazon. Okay, so the next product that I'm gonna talk about is an absolute, absolute must. If the drummer in your life does not already own these, you're going to do them the biggest favor by getting them this as a gift this Christmas. The product I'm referring to is the Vic Firth SIH1. That's this guy right here. This is a pair of sound isolation headphones from Vic Firth. If you notice, they are very similar looking to these headphones. What are these? These are industrial jackhammer headphones. These have a noise reduction of about about 30 decibels. This has a noise reduction of about, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's about 28, 29 decibels. So it's very close. They cut out a lot of unnecessary excess noise when you're playing. And they allow you, because they are a headphone, to hear everything you need to hear. Whether you're just throwing on a click track in your ear while you're jamming on the kit, or you're rehearsing for a gig and learning certain songs or whatever it is. If you want to listen to music, if you want to have a click while you're playing, this is the best way to do it. Hearing protection is so important and this makes it so that you can still get everything that you need to get into your ears, into your ears without having to run. I've seen people go the Apple earphone route where you've got a pair of these on and then the headphone wire going up inside of it. Not as comfortable as the Vic Firth headphones. So definitely, definitely grab these. I don't know if this is the case, but I started buying these headphones when I started playing the drums. And when I bought my first pair, I swear that it was like maybe $80. The price tag on these guys continues to go up for whatever reason. I think they're up around 120 bucks right now. So you can get them on Amazon for. They're totally worth it. The only thing that I can say that I don't like very much about these ones is I've noticed that this is the latest design. The design that came out right before this had more low end, and I do miss that about these. 
but such a sturdy product, definitely should grab them. So staying along the theme of hearing protection, the next thing I'm gonna to talk to you is about filter plugs. Filter plugs are sweet and they're cheap. The idea behind a filter plug is the product that I just showed you, those Vic Verth headphones, along with the industrial earmuffs that you would use for jackhammering or construction sites. Those guys are gonna reduce the volume or the decibel for you so that everything gets quieter, but what it does is it cuts certain frequencies. You're gonna find that you can still hear the low end and that there's very little high end in those headphones. That's okay for some situations, some predicaments. When you're playing your kit and you've got those Vic Verth headphones on, I find that it makes the kit sound really huge because you can only hear the low end so yeah I don't know your drums are gonna sound great through those but it's not the true EQ of the room it's not actually what's going on so how can you protect your ears but still hear the full range of what the sound is that you're listening to well filter plugs are what you can use you can get these guys from Zildjian and then there's several other companies that sell them they come in packs of like four sometimes essentially the idea is they're gonna plug your ear out but then they allow sound in through a filter and that filter is going to keep the EQ of the room intact so everything will stay true to how it sounds. I believe that you can get these in 9, 15, and 30 decibel configurations. You can just check on the packaging or in the item description if you're shopping online on what version you're about to pick up. I personally would recommend the 30 decibels. If you're trying to reduce something by 15 decibels, it's not really, in my mind, it doesn't really make sense. I think at very minimum you would need 30 decibels. Especially if we're talking about like saving your ears backstage or if you're a sound guy or if you're going to a show and you want to be able to hear everything and it not be re sort of EQ'd or altered because of the protection you've got it. So yeah, those are fantastic. This next one, absolute no brainer. You guessed it, drumsticks. Drummers always, always need drumsticks. I know I do at least. I break my drumsticks constantly. Depending on what style of music you play, you might not break them as much, but odds are your sticks will eventually crack, they will wear out, they will break down, and you will need a new pair. So these guys are always a foolproof gift for somebody this holiday season. So the thing that I never really liked about getting drumsticks as a gift, especially if it's from someone I really care about, is that I'm gonna break them. So if you're shopping for someone who is really close to you, my advice would be not to get them drumsticks. Get them something that's gonna last longer. Get them the headphones, get them the moon gels, you know, get them the lug locks. Don't get them something that they're going to destroy within a couple weeks of you getting them the gift. Although, if this is for like a work secret Santa, then this is the perfect gift. Because even though you might know nothing about the drummer or what gear he owns, the one thing that I can guarantee you for sure is that drummer you're buying for does play the drumsticks. <laughs> so how do you find out what drumsticks to get? Well, when I was like 16 years old, I got my first job. I was working at Hot Topic at the mall. Christmas season came around and we had a secret Santa in the store. One of my coworkers was assigned my name as who they're buying a gift for for that secret Santa and they knew that I was a drummer so what he did was he hit me up outside of work and he made up some story about how his cousin's a drummer and he wants to get his cousin drumsticks for Christmas or something or he wanted to, he had to go to the store and pick up his cousin's sticks and he didn't know what to get whatever and he just then said like you know like what sticks do you use and then I just said the size and the make and model at the time I think I was playing uh, I was playing Promark sticks at the time I think I was playing Promark five B's. So I told them get Promark 5 B's and they just got me a couple pairs of those for Christmas. So if you got a secret Santa coming out and you're purchasing for a drummer, that's a really great suggestion. Uh, definitely do that. Sticks are always in demand. Depending on the sticks that you're buying for this person too, if they are new to the drums, they don't really care about quality or balance or any of the things that go into more expensive sticks, then you can get them a large amount of sticks for very cheap. Like you can get like 12 pairs of sticks for 25 bucks on Amazon if you don't really care about the model very much. You can pick your sizing. It's not going to be the best quality it might not be the best balance the finish on the stick might not be finished at all or it just might be not as comfortable as a more expensive sort of premium stick if you're looking at the premium sort of signature series sticks or or any flagship stick from you know Promark or Vic Verth or any of those companies you're looking at about 10 to 15 bucks per pair so the next product I'm gonna get into here is a stick holder you just bought this person all these sticks now they need something to hold it with stick holders are fantastic I have two and in prepping for this video I got together all these products that I want to talk about and for the life of me I could not find my two stick holders I guess it's because I haven't been playing live for so long and they've just been thrown away into storage or something but I do have to find those there are some pictures on the screen right now for you of what I'm talking about when I go out and play live I mount one of these stick holders to my hi-hat stand so I have a cluster of sticks to my left and I mount one of them to my crash ride stand so just below the crash ride sticking out between the gap from the rack tom and the floor tom just over top of the bass drum I have another cluster of sticks so if I drop or break the stick in my right hand then I grab from below the crash ride and if I drop and break the stick in the left hand same thing 
thing that I grab out of the hi-hat cluster. So yeah, these are really, really great. A lot of drummers, especially if they're just getting into gigging, might not even know about this or use these yet. Sometimes guys will use the stick bags that hang off of the lugs off of one of the drums. Most oftentimes you'll see that off of one of the floor toms. Those are great, but they don't give you the same access as these stick holders do. So there's a stick holder by, I think Vader has one, and then for sure Vic Firth. Both of mine were by Vic Firth. So yeah, check those out. Those are really great gift ideas as well. The price range on these guys are gonna be around 25 bucks on Amazon. You can get them all the way up to 100 and 150 dollars if you're gonna go with some kind of extravagant crazy Mino version, because Mino does have a couple. One of them, theirs has some graphics on it. I guess that's worth the extra 20 bucks because it's like 120 instead of 100. So I don't know, you don't really need that. The one thing I'll say about those guys too is that they are hardware mounted so that everything is module with them. So you, you can actually build out like module like units for the side of the drum set with like tables or whatever else you need. Practice pads will fit into this as well because of everything standardized across hardware specs. I think that's probably the big reason in why it's so expensive compared to the Vader and Vic Versa models, which are simply just like a clamp that grabs onto the stand. I always just go with that because it's just it's super simple and easy. So the next thing that's a great product to pick up for a drummer is a new practice pad. What if he already has a practice pad? Well, get him a second. You can never have enough practice pads. It's a good idea, honestly, I do this a lot to have multiple practice pads to just get comfortable in playing back and forth between two pads. It can simulate your snare drum and maybe like a floor tom or a snare in a rack. It allows you to practice sort of moving through what would be the toms, but obviously it's just pads. Practice pads are gonna come in all shapes and sizes. It's a really great gift version of a practice pad. Some of them glow in the dark. That might be a really fun gift to grab the drummer in your life. Sabian now makes a practice pad that actually locks onto the lugs. It screws into the lugs on your snare drum or any other drum. I think the standard size on that guy is 14, so it would fit best on a floor tom or, an, or a snare drum. But I think you can actually order it in other sizes as well. So if you wanted to, if you have an acoustic kit and you want to dampen it completely, you can get the low volume cymbals from Sabian or Zildjian or Minel, and then you could strap the Sabian pads onto each head and then the practice pads are the head. That would low noise the kit all the way out so that you can practice on your full kit. When Whenever you wanted to if you uh, are restricted by noise complaints stuff like that so yeah practice pads are always a great idea along with the standard practice pads it's going to replicate sort of like a tom or a snare drum you can also get foot versions this technically is not a practice pad for your feet but this is what i use as my foot pad this is the uh, kd80 by roland this is actually a trigger sensor but the dw version of this guy that you cannot plug a trigger into it's just a smaller looking version of this i'm going to put that on the screen for you now you can check that out so whether it's a practice practice pad for the feet or practice pad for the hands, both are great options, especially for the feet. It's very common that drummers don't own pads for their feet, and they should, because anytime they're on the practice pad for their hands, they're just neglecting the feet, and they could be working on it both. So yeah, strongly recommend that. The last thing I'll quickly mention along the lines of practice pads is, I'm putting it on the screen for you, DW makes a practice pad set. When I was 19, I was out on the road at one point, touring with the band I was in at the time, but we were on a tour package with a band called Youth and Revolt. Shout out to Youth and Revolt. And uh, the drummer at the time, Scott, he had the DW kit that I just put up on the screen for you, which is a full kit of practice pads. I don't own that kit, I wish I did. I used it every night of that tour. I loved it. I think if you're on the road, it's phenomenal. You don't wanna have to drag an electric kit around with you. That DW, I think it's like 250 bucks, that DW practice pad set is perfect. I would literally hit Scott up before every performance and be like, yo, can I warm up on that real quick? Take his DW pad set aside and play through the entire set with the back tracks just on my ears. And I found that like, it was sweet getting to play through the set before going on stage it was the best way to warm up. So that's a great gift. And if you're a drummer just watching this, if you're considering getting an electric kit, but you're like, I can most of the time play my acoustic kit. Do I really need all this expensive cables and hardware and brain and drum modules and all this stuff just to make my life more confusing? No, you don't. Purchase that DW practice pad set. I need to get one for sure, especially before the next time that I go out and gig. So the next thing I'm gonna bring up as a great gift idea is any type of drum case. I have for my for my Crush Sublime E3 set, as you can see here I have one of the toms. I have a full set of the head cases, which are these soft cases. 
The reason I got the head cases was I do have ATA cases, so um, so road cases for my drum set and all its hardware. But there are times where I don't have a van or a trailer that I'm going out with. I need to just get in my Civic and drive down the road to a studio or whatever it is. Having these soft plush cases really, really help with that. I can just throw the soft case on and then pack everything into the back of the Civic and drive out. Having these on top of a road case, I strongly recommend. If you don't have cases at all, however, I recommend you go get those right this second and if you know somebody who's a drummer this Christmas get them some cases if they don't have it these are so so important for keeping your gear intact when you go to shows obviously I don't even need to say it so yeah a head and sk8 make really great cases this is the soft case that I use for all of my pieces of my sublime 83 and then for my actual symbols I own an sk8 symbol vault I own two of these guys they're really really sweet super simple you pop up the top and then inside you're gonna have these dividers you're just gonna unscrew the center column and then put the symbols in putting the uh, foam dividers in place protecting the symbol from one another so that they're not scratching inside the ground and you lock it shut and when all the symbols are in here it literally is what it's described as it's a vault you cannot damage any of these guys so for symbols this is a really great gift and requirement if you're going to be touring I can't even stress that enough and for the shells the soft cases or even SK8 they have hard case versions for all your drums as well so you can get the hard case by SK8 or you can check out a head for what they've got in the plush cases and I think they do have a hard line as well Okay, we're almost at the end of our list here. This next product I really should have included with the stocking stuffer stuff. I forgot about it. We're gonna come back. This one is sweet. I love these things. I have two of them on my drum set for when I go out. They're called the swirly gig. Basically, super simple. This little swirl here will wrap around the small part of most cymbal stands. You put your water bottle or you put a beer inside and you're good to go for the show. You can have a couple of these on the kit if you want to hold sort of like sort of two or three waters. I mean, yeah, you can just put the water down beside you, but this comes in handy. You can use it on all kinds of things too. It doesn't just have to be in your drum set. Last thing we're gonna talk about is percussion slash cymbal effects. The reason why I included this in the list is because oftentimes with drummers budgeting, typically most of the drummer's money is gonna to go towards the drum kit itself, hardware for it, and then the cymbals, which is gonna be probably a crash ride or a ride or a crash couple crashes themselves, maybe a china, maybe a hi-hat. What most drummers leave to last, and I know at least I did for this for sure, is the effect stuff. So in front of me I have some effects percussion. This is just an example of a cowbell. You can get a drummer a cowbell, and this makes a really great gift because odds are they don't have one, and it's a lot of fun. It's just when you're playing, it sort of expands the possibilities, and you find yourself pulling off things that you wouldn't have ever thought of before, sort of fills or different grooves, because you now have this new piece in the set. So a cowbell, a wood block, there's lots of cool percussion examples of effects as well as symbols. There's lots of cool effects symbols. There's stacks, splash symbols, stuff along those lines. Depending on what brand the drummer you're buying for plays, if they play Minel or Zildjian or TRX or Sabian, whatever it is, then find out what brand they play. Every symbol is going to be labeled and then you can just grab a splash symbol or a stack inside of that brand and surprise them with it. They might be super stoked on the fact that they have this new cool toy to play with in their set. Okay, sweet, so that's it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed me breaking down some great Christmas gifts for drummers in your life. If you're a drummer watching this video, hopefully you got some inspiration to check out some of these things. A lot of the early products in the video are very, very cheap, under 10 bucks, some of them, and might really help you when it comes to your own kit. Please make sure to subscribe if you have not yet, and turn on post notifications by ringing that bell. I have a lot of really exciting videos coming out this week and next week, and I'm super excited to share them with you. You guys are definitely going to want to be around for those. If you want updates on when I'm dropping new videos and what the videos are about, you can connect with me further at any of my social media pages. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. The links to those pages are on the screen for you right now as well in the description below. Thank you so much for checking out this video once again, and I will see you guys very soon with something new.